as far as this whole snitch situation and the Crip Mac situation, they're kind of tied in together because Crip Mac was referencing a 1090 Jake video where he said in the video that a guy by the name of Bobby got life behind some statements that you made. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I was coming yeah. straight from Crip Mac in his interview. What is it? What is the validity of any of that? Is any of that factual? Hey, I just told you, Bobby ain't got no life for me, for me with no statement. They got Bobby with a life sentence for somebody saying he killed some children in a house. Of my, he said some, which is a lie. Because Bob ain't even that type of nigga. He was a nigga that looked up to me growing up. He's a good guy, come from a good family. His father and my father was best friends, which his father's name is Bobby Sugg Sr. My daddy's name was William Brookshire Jr. They was in the same gang growing up. You know what I'm saying? Bob was like a little homie. You know what I'm saying? I, he, wasn't, he didn't have nothing for me to tell him. You know, so you, you know, why would I tell you? Like, I know I was, I was the big nigga. You, you, you know, said there was a group of rappers. You know, what I'm saying that wasn't worth ten thousand dollars. You know, what I'm saying. Now, so, this, now this is the group that was called CCA. Is yeah, that CCA. Correct? Shout out to CCA. Shout out to Mac, a stand up guy. Shout out to them. They all stand up guys, but I, I'm not their rap. I'm not their rap. You know, said like, you can get these guys anywhere in the world. They not gonna say that I got them put in prison. I ain't got no wild taps on these niggas. I ain't got no grand jury on these niggas, none of that. After a nigga said that I killed somebody, that's when I said, but did he tell you we was cooking crack? That's how that happened. I ain't ducked the tail behind that in the, anywhere in the federal prison, anywhere across the state joint, anywhere across the globe. Every gangster in the world will tell you that nigga stand on business, he stand on ten toes down, and he ready to die. In any neighborhood, in any game, and I can't make this shit up, my nigga. I'm 100. Crip Matt trying to use this as an escape goat, and he can't do it. Because I just told you what it is, and how you going not f with me, but you make 1090 J stamp you as a Crip, and you put it on your paper, but you don't f with rats. You go and he kicks it with a sexual, but you don't f with rats. But you got a rat on your page right now that said he's stamping your Crip. Nigga, I don't need no nigga to stop this, this motherfucker one way. Shit. I validate me. I'm an American gangster. Okay, okay. Now, just to, to close that out, just to close that short part out there, then at the end of the interview, he kind of called you a uh, clout chaser and said that you were doing this to chase clout. Is there any validity in that? Man, I've been clouded up. You go back on my backdrops from when I've been in the game. I've been doing Brookshire Mafia. I'm all over you two with the game. I'm all over YouTube with all, I got a documentary out when I walked out the Fed joint in 2009, walking through my whole city filming and this, this and that. That's on YouTube. You can't, you can't, you can't deny me. You can't boycott me. I'm really an American gangster. I really control shit. And I got proof of that on my YouTube channel. Gary ain't accepting rats like that. We just ain't doing it. I got ties to every neighborhood in the city. Okay. Now, Kind of related to that, I wanted to ask you about this. Now, you've got a long history, and I'm not just trying to put you in your dirty laundry Man, in the you street. Been, hey, listen, I, ain't, I ain't ducking nothing. Let's go. Don't I ain't ducking nothing. I'm really that nigga. You got a long history as far as, like, your federal convictions and some of your state convictions in Indiana, man. It's like, And it's all public knowledge and public record, right? Now, it seemed like for a while there, if it, according to the to the statements or according to the charges that you took, you spent some time in the drug game. How long were you in the drug game and how long did that last? I was in the drug game my whole life since I was 14. I, I, I've been in the drug game my whole life, man. I, I don't want to start a jiggy from my city. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't want to talk to them how to get money. Shout out to Rick Ballin, Hurl Ballin, and all the ones before me because I can't speak about it unless I put them out there first because it's a chain of command and it's, it's this my world. You know what I'm saying? I have to speak on the ones that before me before I start speaking my game. But I took the game to another level. You know what I'm saying? So I've been in that my whole life. I changed my life when I had Messiah the Great and Heaven Brookshire, which is my two baby children. I got two other sons, which is Stacy Brookshire Jr. and Maniac that's in the federal prison that's on his way home. But I wasn't in their life because I did a lot of time in prison and they still on business like their dad still on business. And they still stand on business today. Okay. Now, it seemed like in that high profile case that you caught in 1999, you were sentenced to taking to taking a lot of time. How much time did you actually do in the long run? I did almost 10 years, almost 11, 10, about 10, 11 years because uh, 
after they after the uh they the, the guy that came in from court that came in from uh the one I told you to put, put the murder on me about shit I went back and said that uh they uh uh, uh did he tell you we were cooking a key of crack cocaine? Mm-hmm. After I made that statement and did that situation, they took three, four years off. And I stood on that. 